Hello, pup parents, and welcome to today's episode of the Perfect Pup Podcast. My name is Devin. We're going to look at the age-old question of do dogs feel guilt? If you went on social media or you searched on YouTube, you would be probably led to believe that, yes, dogs do feel guilt. Look at all these guilty looks from dogs. But we're going to look at a study that was done to determine if dogs actually understand when they've done a misdeed or when they've quote unquote disobeyed. So let's get right into it. If you scroll through social media, you'll probably see a compilation video of guilty dog looks or the world's guiltiest dogs. And it's all these shots of people coming home and garbage is everywhere or a toy is torn up or whatever misdeed you want. And the dog is standing there looking guilty, quote unquote. They are cowering or their ears are pinned or they're avoiding eye contact. You know, some of those submissive behaviors and appeasement behaviors uh, that dogs often exhibit. So you might think, okay, the dog is feeling guilt, but are they really, do they really understand that they've done something quote unquote wrong? And without getting too deep into a philosophical debate about guilt and what that really means, in the terms of this study specifically, guilt is associated with an understanding of a misdeed, meaning the dog comprehends and recognizes that they did something quote unquote wrong. Another term that is important to look at as we're diving into this study is anthropomorphism. Essentially what that means is taking human traits and human behaviors and tying them to animals, in this case, dogs. And those anthropomorphic connections almost always don't have scientific backing. An extreme example of anthropomorphism is Goofy from the Disney character who is walking, talking, but he's a dog, right? It's it's these traits from humans that are kind of given to animals, whether they are realistic or not. And another term that is used in this study, and I'll maybe use it as the acronym as well, is ABs. And ABs are just defined as associated behavior. So essentially, as they were conducting this study, they asked the pet parents involved to kind of define what they look at as the guilty look, what they see as the guilty look from their dog. And there was a handful of different criteria, but you know, some of them were, again, sulking or kind of trying to make themselves smaller, avoiding eye contact, um, you know, maybe trying to leave the room. Y- you can imagine it in your own head. Um, but those were what the study called associated behaviors or ABs, basically the guilty look. So here's how the study went down. This study was done by Alexandra Horowitz in uh, 2009, and essentially they took 14 dogs, variety of breeds, variety of ages. The requirement was that the dogs were at least six months old and have lived in that home for at least three months so that there was you know, a relationship between human and dog. The study was actually conducted in the living rooms of these 14 individual dogs and their pet parents just to you know, really drive home that it's giving as little variance as possible because of scenario or environment. So it was done in the living room of these pet parents. So here's what happened. They took the dog. This was all video recorded as well. They took the dogs and the humans and put them in the living room. And there was a treat involved. And the human told the dog not to eat the treat, you know, whether they said leave it or no, no, or uh, whatever it was, right? But they, they clearly communicated to the dog, do not eat this treat. The human leaves the room, the dog is left there, the observer and the researcher would then either take the treat away to completely verify that the treat was not consumed so that the dog quote unquote obeyed. Uh, And then in other instances, the dogs were given access to the treat, uh, sometimes even, you know, kind of guided to, to eat it without undermining the pet parent's direction. The human then is told without having come back in and without having seen what actually happened, they were told either A, the dog obeyed and did not eat the treat, or B, the dog disobeyed and ate the treat. And they are told to respond one of two ways accordingly. 
if they are told the dog ate the treat, they are supposed to scold. And that doesn't mean hitting or anything like that. Just, you know, the verbal scolding of, oh, no, did you do this? Or, uh-oh, or, oh, bad girl, or what, whatever it is, right? They're told to scold if the dog ate the treat. Or if they are told if the dog did not eat the treat to come in and greet the dog happily, hey, you know, hey, hey, bud, or give them, you know, give them some pets, just be a calm demeanor greeting them. The twist here is that sometimes the pet parents were told the opposite of what happened. So they were told, for example, hey, your dog ate the treat and disobeyed you. You need to scold the dog when in reality, the dog had not eaten the treat. The treat had even been removed from the room. So there was no chance of the dog eating the treat and disobeying. Pup parents come back in, give the response based on what they were told by the researcher. And the results were extremely interesting. Here is what the researchers found. There was no significant effect on the quote-unquote guilty looks or associated behaviors based on obedience. So whether the dog did or did not eat the treat, so whether they obeyed or disobeyed, did not have a significant effect on associated behaviors, aka the guilty look or looking guilty or acting guilty. What did have a strong and st statistically significant effect on the associated behaviors, on the guilty look, was the pet parent's response, the scolding. And that should be the piece of information that really hopefully kind of flips a switch in our head as pup parents to realize that when you come home, your dog tore up a shoe, they act quote unquote guilty because of our response as pet parents. And you might think, well, why are they acting that way? Why are they cowering or why are they avoiding eye contact? Because likely in the past, there was something that happened that created a learned connection in the dog's brain to understand when my pet parent is scolding me, whatever that looks like, right? Raising your voice, getting angry, a, the tone of your voice, the words that you're saying, even just your own feelings. We've talked in, on this podcast about how dogs can read our chemical messages. Even the feelings of anger and, and being frustrated and bothered that your dog destroyed something, those things are what your dog is responding to. They are not responding to, oh, I did something that I know deep inside was wrong. They are responding to your behaviors and your cues and your verbal, physical, emotional responses. Let that sink in for a second. Our dogs respond in a guilty look because of our actions, because of a response that they've learned to our behaviors, our words, our tone, our emotional chemical messages that we are giving out. So you might be thinking, well, that's just one study, you know, and of course every study has its limitations, but a link to the specific study, you should read it, you should check it out, you should look at the statistics because it's pretty evident that the only real correlation between the quote unquote guilty look was the human scolding the dog. And what was even more interesting is that, that there is that there were higher rates of quote unquote guilty looks when the dog had obeyed, but was still scolded. So take with that what you want. My goal is not to tell someone they're wrong or right if they think dogs feel guilt. I just want to lay out the evidence and the information that has been presented by someone who knows a whole lot more than I do about dog behavior and about conducting experiments. And they found a statistically significant effect on the guilty look via the human scolding. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. The takeaway that I think we should have as pup parents is less about the debate on whether or not dogs feel guilt, but really what can be gleaned from this research is that our behavior as humans, our responses and how we interact with and communicate with our dogs plays a large effect 
on their mental psyche and how they're going to behave and how they're going to react. And, you know, those appeasement behaviors, the appeasement body language, like the cowering, the avoiding eye contact, even leaving the room, it's just our dogs expressing a learned response to our own actions and decisions that they have had happen previously in their lives. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'd love to hear your opinion on it. Tell me why you think I'm wrong. Tell me why you think Alexandra Horowitz is wrong. Tell me your experience. Tell me you know, what you've seen in this regard. I love healthy debate and healthy commentary. So please, please give it. If you haven't already, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're on YouTube, subscribe, leave us a comment. And other than that, we will catch you on the next episode.